Hello, dear friends, and welcome to our virtual celebration for the week of January 9th. It's so good to be with you all again. It seems like it's been forever. I guess it's only been a week virtually, but it's nice to see you again. We're in this month's uh, theme and exploration from the Science of Mind text. We're going back to basics. We're dealing with the thing itself, the way it works, what it does, and how to use it. So settle in and let's do this thing. All that I need comes to me. The light of love and grace shine upon my face. All that I need comes to me. I've been set free, I'm released. I've been set free. past gone away at last I've been set free I'm released sweet rain that washes me clean sweet rain that washes me clean. The mind creates all things, into my life it brings. Sweet rain that washes me clean. to me all that I need comes to me the light of love and grace shine upon my face all that I need to me all that I need comes to me all that I need comes to me Okay, here we are in 2022. Our theme for the month of January is finding spiritual fulfillment in learning. You know, we're taking this, this yearly theme, it started in September, and we're just kind of going through it month by month, exploring it in relationship to the cosmic weather, the natural progressions of things. And you know, something that I've always loved in the science of mind and spirit since I was first in this back in the early 90s is every January there's this 
return to, as we call it, the basics. The basics, the thing itself, how it works, what it does, and, and how to use it. And it's it's always exciting for me to give us an, an opportunity to look at these, these basic principles with fresh eyes. So last week we talked about the thing itself. And what is the thing itself? The thing itself is that divine creative presence that lives in and through and as all things. It exists as you. It exists as me. It exists as every animal, every bird, every tree, every atom. Everything is infused, is immersed, is expressing this divine presence. And that you and I are invited to be part of the ongoing evolution of creation. And we do that by the principle that thoughts are causative, that thoughts are consequential. What we think, we become. What we become is what's known in the world. So this is the first principle. This is the thing itself. God with us. God as us. God as all creation and our participatory experience in the whole thing. So how does it work? What I love about our teaching is the opportunity to use timeless wisdom today. So I kind of want to start this talk with going back to Dante. I've been reading this last year, The Divine Comedy, and I'm sort of working my way through the Purgatio, or the, the, the Purgatory Cantos, the, the middle section of it. And about the 17th or 18th Canto, there's this really interesting line that is said by one of the characters in it, where he says, time is love. Time is love? What in the world does that mean? But this is how Dante explains it. What we spend time with, we love. What we love, we become. So time, in a sense, is what we become. It's what we love. So time is love. Now he goes on, and I'm not going to deal with it today, but he goes on and talks about you know the types of love, the, the ordinate and disordered loves, the, the things that we shouldn't love that we love, the things that we should love that we love wrongly, the things that we love that we love correctly. But all this has to do with consciousness. And, and really, this is what I want to talk about. So time is love because where we place our time is what we are becoming. That's, that's the very essence of it. And there's another way to kind of look at this. And this comes from, again, great metaphysicians of, of all ages, which is that we become our own idea of God. And that God itself expresses itself in our idea of what it is. Father Richard Rohr says it this way. Your image of God creates you. You become the God you worship. If your God is an external torturer, then torture is validated. If God is the image of a king, then we all want to be kings. If God is love and relationality, that creates a very different kind of humanity. So that's where we are. So the question is, where do you love? Where is your heart? because this is where your treasure is. So the thing itself, probably in the easiest way to say it, is this. The thing itself is we become the thing we love. So there's a whole conversation about this, of course, and, and where we kind of explore what we love and why we love it. Is it appropriate for us and, and, and all that. And I'm gonna talk about that a lot next week. I wanna continue was something that, um, you know, one of my favorite authors from years and years ago is this great old metaphysician by the name of Dion Fortune. Now, Dion Fortune is a very interesting woman. During the Second World War, she's British, living in England, and during the Second World War, she was approached by the British government to reach out to members of her community wherever they were dispersed throughout the, uh, the British Isles, and to have people 
literally visualize and pray to protect the British Isles from the attack of the, the, the Nazis. Now, this was, this was happening for two reasons. One is, first, the British knew that, that the higher-ups in the Nazi regime were occultists. So they enlisted an occultist so that they could understand the thinking processes of, of the fascists themselves. But the other thing is, is it was literally to build a bridge in consciousness, to create a state of being that created a dome of protection. And what's really interesting is that Dionne Fortune communicated with all her people all over by mail. There was no internet and phones weren't really working. And they persisted in this. One time she was asked, you know, when is this whole thing going to end? What she said is, I can't tell you when it'll end, but I can tell you how it will end. It will end when the conditions that created it are resolved. And you know, that is a metaphysical truth that we can take at the bank. You know, we're looking right now at there's a lot of conditions. There's the, the pandemic, there's um, climate change, there's unsettled issues going on here and there, everywhere in our world. And we wonder, how's it gonna end? When's it gonna end? It will end when the conditions that created them are resolved. And I want to also offer it this way. Think about your own life. Maybe it's not anything dramatic. Maybe it's just something that's annoying. Or maybe it really is dramatic. Something that's going on in your life. You're hearing the bells. I love them. So if there's something that you're wanting to change, that you're wanting to complete, to finish, and you're wondering, when will this end? I don't think anybody can tell you when it will end. But going back to Dion Fortune, what we can say is this. We know how it will end. It will end when the conditions that created it are resolved. Whether that be issues of, of health. If you're wanting a greater sense of health because you're experiencing some, some health challenges, those will end when the conditions that created them are resolved. If it's financial, if it's work, if it's relationship, if it's creating something, writing that book and feeling that writer's block or whatever it may be, it will resolve itself when the conditions that created it are resolved. And so that's where we work. We work at the level of consciousness, not necessarily at the, at, in the world of the things themselves, because the things themselves are results of what created those things. You know, uh, one of our practitioners for our live service gave this quote, and it's attributed to Mahatma Gandhi, but I've read this quote before and I've seen it attributed to Buddha. I really don't know who wrote this, but it's very wise. And the words are this. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. Your values become your destiny. So in a sense, the abridged version of that is this. Your destiny is created by your thoughts. That is how it works. Ernest Holmes in The Science of Mind says it this way. We can only see it by looking at it through our own eyes. Hence, we shall find a better God when we have arrived at a higher standard for humanity. So if we're looking for change, if we're looking for growth, if we're looking for expansion, this will happen at the level of our own perception of how things are. You know, again, going back to Dante, Dante has this really interesting conversation with his guide Virgil on the power of love and becoming the thing that we love and the thing that we desire and how we become the thing that we desire. 
And what Virgil tells uh, Dante in this poem, in one of the cantos, I think it's 17 or 18 again, is this. He says that when we perceive something that is pleasing to us, it creates an image in our mind. And then we become captivated by that image and pursue it until we experience that very thing. You know, this was 700 years ago, 500 years ago, 700, it was a long time ago, but nonetheless, it was, it was 700 years ago. This, this idea, this concept of creating an image in our mind, because again, going back to what do you think about most? What concerns you most? Where do you spend your time thinking, imagining, hoping, worrying, desiring? This is what you are becoming. And we can consciously choose that. Again, going back to Dante, he gives us this kind of story about it. But let me explain it like this way. Suppose someone comes knocking at your door. You may want them to come in, or you may think, you know, it's not a good idea for them to come in. What Dante says is our ability to reason, to think things through, to enjoy our level of consciousness really should be the guardian of the threshold of our conscious and subjective mind. And so we use those things, memory, reason, imagination, really as sentinels to protect us, to invite in that which we want, and to keep on the other side of the threshold those things that we know in our heart of hearts are not necessarily the direction that we want to go or the desires that we want to pursue. So ultimately, the litmus test of how it works is what do I love? What do I love? Because that's where I'm heading. That's how things works. Again, going back to Ernest Holmes, he says it like this. The thing then works for us by working through us and is us always. The way it works is this thing that we call the divine works through us, becoming us. We are it and it is us. A tool that we use is a spiritual mind treatment, a five-step affirmative prayer. And it begins with a contemplation of the thing itself. There is one living presence, one intelligence that permeates all creation. And that that life that it is and the life that is living me are one and the same. And I consciously choose to love, to attend, to give my time to a greater experience of all that is. I give my time, my thoughts, my heart to abundant health, to prosperity allowing me to live generously, to love and community, to goodwill in all areas. I invite them in, allowing them to become me as I become an expression of them. And I live in gratitude. I live in gratitude for this moment, for this thought, for this experience, for this technology. And there's nothing that I have to do. I just allow my thoughts to be here. I let myself return to this again and again, and it becomes me and I become it. And so it is.
try my best to improvise And take it all in as it comes Can't let the little things linger in your mind, no, no Not gonna waste any more of my time Shining on my face Breathing in the wide open air I ain't got no right to complain We all heard our fair share Thank you again for being part of our virtual community in all the ways that you support us. Every time you like us, it triggers an algorithm. Every time you share, every time you comment, these are important things and we're watching the numbers tick. So thank you because it's working. And again, thank you for that continual and generous support. It allows us to expand this program classes, other things that we're doing. So I'm just so grateful that we're all in this together, being agile, making sense, and in all conditions thriving. Many, many blessings.